This evening, the passage of Scripture is taken from 2 Chronicles, chapter 11, verses 1 through 17. Begin in verse 1. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin and hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. <coughs> and the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord, and returned from going against Jeroboam. <laughs> And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. He built even in Bethlehem, Etem, Tekoa, and Bethzur, and Shoko, and Adullam, and Gath, and Marisha, and Ziph, and Adoram, and Lachish, and Azekiah, and Zorah, and Ajalon, and Hebron, which are in Judah, in, and in Benjamin fenced cities. And he fortified the strongholds, and put captains in them, and store of victuals, and of oil and wine. And in every several city, he put shields and spears, and made them exceeding strong having Judah and Benjamin on his side. And the priest and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coast. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem for Jeroboam his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. And he ordained him priest for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord, God of Israel came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong three years. For three years they walked in the way of David and Solomon. This evening, the message I would like for us to see what the Lord is teaching us here and that is, there is strength through obedience. As the Lord spoke to Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29 through 31, the Lord said to Moses, If thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he had sworn unto them. In other words, as long as we obey God, obey his word, and seek him with all of our heart, 
we shall be abundantly blessed. And the principle that we see set forth here in the text this evening is this. Our strength comes from loving obedience to God. We do not merit grace, the grace of strength, by our obedience. But God blesses obedience with strength. It was at the dedication of the temple in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 17 through 22, where God said to King Solomon, And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me, that is, if you will be obedient unto me, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish thy throne thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David, thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be a ruler in Israel. God is in covenant with his people. We are covenant, are to be covenant keepers. That is, we are to be obedient to the word of God. And there are consequences for breaking covenant with God. As we read on in 2 Chronicles 7, God says, But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods, and worship them, then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, And this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. If we keep covenant, if you walk in obedience to my word, God says that he would establish them as a people. But when they disobey and worship idols and turn to uh, other gods which are no gods, and worship them, that God will judge them. This is something that we ought to take note of, especially in our own time. Uh, We need to see our land uh, returning as it was in times past to the fear of the one true and only God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the one God In three persons, we need to, as Christians, call people to repentance in in this land. I know there is this thinking of we ought to be tolerant of other religions. Well, we know there's only one true religion. We know that there's only one true God. And it's the Christians as being a light unto the world, it's our responsibility to hold people's feet to the fire about who they are to worship, the God that made them. It is not up to them to make their own gods. They are to worship the God who created them, who made them. And as Christians, we, we are, I'm not saying anything about this particular congregation, but we find in general that there's This uh, desensitizing of our responsibility as Christians to hold people accountable to the word of God and to bring them to the word and show them this is what God has said and you are in transgression to his word. We're seeing this in so many ways where our land has turned away from the God of the scriptures. We have turned even now as it is uh, unto an agenda to to promote the debauchery that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, whatever uh, is said about that in public ought to be said based upon Scripture in a loving way that we need to turn away from this direction that we are headed because it will ultimately ruin us. God 
had shown that to Israel again and again and again. Can you imagine? A whole nation was plucked up out of their land and carried off into Babylon for 70 years. And God brought them back and uh, reestablished them. And then again, they were, as we know, some 2,000 years ago, uh, taken off of that land. And why? Because they rejected uh, their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So God's word is true. If we are faithful to serving him and loving him, we will be blessed. But when we turn away unto idolatry, uh, we are begging God's judgment upon us because God has promised that uh, he will bring that judgment. We see Solomon, you'll remember how that he had uh, taken to himself many wives, and those wives had turned his heart away from Jehovah God. And God judged Solomon's sin by dividing the kingdom. He said to Solomon that uh, he will do that very thing. And we see how that it happened under the reign of Solomon's son, Rehoboam. God had divided the kingdom. Ten of the tribes followed Jeroboam, into calf worship. And even as it says in the passage that I read, they worshipped the devil. They worshipped calves. And here we see Rehoboam now in this passage. He wants to reunite Israel. He wants to bring the ten tribes back with the Benjamin, and with Judah. So Rehoboam then begins to raise up an army. He's going to try to do it forcefully by going after the ten tribes in Israel and uniting them to Judah and to Benjamin. And here we see he resisted the dividing of the 12 tribes, which God said was going to happen. Now, you know, sometimes there are things that are unpleasant. This is a very unpleasant thing for this nation to have been divided, but it was because of a judgment that God had put upon Solomon's sin, that the kingdom would be divided. And sometimes we have to understand from God's word more clearly what his will and purpose is for our lives. We see cross providences, uh, sometimes things that uh, we think ought not to be, and, and yet at the same time, as Rehoboam found out, it was not in his best interest to get an army of 180,000 and go up to the 10 tribes in the north and try to reunify Israel. God had brought that upon Israel because of their sin. In 2 Chronicles 11, verse 1, it says, And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin and hundred and fourscore, that's 180,000 chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. Now, I would like for us to consider the foolishness of Rehoboam's thinking. Now, think about it. It would be better, would it not, for him to leave it the way that God had put it, that they are divided if he goes and fights against the ten tribes. What if, what if, Jeroboam, who is the king over the other ten tribes of the north, what if Jeroboam defeats Rehoboam? Then you don't have any more true worship in Jerusalem because Jeroboam's going to, if I'm speaking hypothetically, if Jeroboam oh, should have defeated Rehoboam. They didn't go to war. But what Rehoboam should have thought is what if he gets defeated? 
then you're going to have nothing but calf worship and devil worship. At least you got two tribes that are faithful in Jerusalem. And so it was very self-serving, really, for Rehoboam to make uh, the two kingdoms to come back together. This was a work that God said that he would do, and he did it in judgment to them. Rehoboam had no, he acted upon no word from the prophets to go and to fight against Jeroboam and bring the ten tribes back into uh, one with Benjamin and uh, with Judah. And so we see God is very merciful. So many times we're like Rehoboam, we think that we're going on the right track, doing the right thing. But God sends out a prophet. His name is Shemaiah, a man of God. And this word of the Lord, it says in verse 2, came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, Thus saith the Lord. Now the thus saith the Lord was that they were to be divided. Rehoboam is going against that word, and the word of God mercifully comes again to him. And the prophet says, this is the word of God. You know, when we start on a path, we need to make sure that we're following the will of God. Thankfully, God had sent uh, prophets to them uh, in these difficult times. And the prophet says, the word of the Lord is this. You shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren. Now think about it. You have brethren fighting against brothers. And so the prophet says, you have 180,000 soldiers here ready to go to war. And the prophet says, return every man to his house. Why? Because the prophet said, this thing is done of me. That is, God said, I have divided him. And what God has divided, who is Rehoboam that he is going to bring them together again. And so, thankfully, for the sake of Judah and Benjamin, it says, and they obeyed the words of the Lord and returned again unto, and returned from going against Jeroboam. The division of the ten tribes from Judah and Benjamin, as we noted, is the will of God. So after setting out to go to battle Jeroboam against Jeroboam, Rehoboam and his army then return unto Judah. Now the second thing I'd have us to note in verses 5 through 12 is that then in obeying, what we want to note here is that there is strength, there is strength in obedience. Now, we can apply this in a very uh, individual sense as well. As we read the Word of God, this is why we read the Word of God, is it not? Is so that we can know what God's will is for our life. And as we walk in obedience to that Word, that we will then find blessing. Now, Rehoboam listened to the prophet and uh, then decided that he would not go then against uh, Jeroboam. And in doing that, he found strength. And I'm going to point that out as we get along further into this passage. Seeing the need then to protect those two tribes against the ten tribes to the north, should they try to come up against them and overtake them, 
Rehoboam then began a project of construction to build some, to strengthen his cities against any type of an invasion from Jeroboam should the ten tribes launch an attack against him. We know beginning in verse 5, it says, And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. He built even Bethlehem and Etim and Tekoa and Bethsur and Choco and Adullam and Gath and Marisha and Ziph and Adoram and Lachish and Azekah and Zorah and Ajalon and Hebron, which are in Judah and in Benjamin fenced cities. They had cities that were fenced uh, to protect them. Now, these cities were fortified, as we said, against any attack. As we noted in verse 11 and 12, he fortified the strongholds and put captains in them and store of victuals, that is, food and supplies and of oil and wine. It says, and in every several city, he put shields and spears and made them exceeding strong. So what he did, rather than God gave him a heart and the wisdom to do this, and we'll give God all the glory in this. Instead of going out to war against Jeroboam and losing a lot of men in a, in a war, it was much wiser for him to obey God and strengthen and fortify uh, Judah and, and Benjamin. And so for his uh, protection, then we see how that uh, he is blessed as he obeyed God and not going ahead to fight against Jeroboam. So, as was noted by Thomas R. Hawes, he's a Puritan uh, author, he said, since their country was become idolatrous, that is, the ten tribes to the north, worshiping uh, the calves, and demons, they were no more permitted to exercise their sacred functions at home or to go up into Jerusalem. Those who wanted to remain faithful in those ten tribes, there were many that wanted to continue on the true worship instead of following the apostasy of Jeroboam. It says, he goes on to say, they quitted or they left their cities and the lands assigned them, rather choosing to suffer hardships. So what happened here, as Rehoboam obeyed God, God strengthened Rehoboam, number one, by not having him go to war and losing thousands of men. They were spared, but also... There were many in those ten tribes that wanted to worship God according to the scriptures. And so many of them left uh, their homes in those tribes, those ten tribes. Because uh, Jeroboam uh, put out the Levites from serving, uh, doing service uh, to the Lord for the Lord's people. There, in those ten tribes, there were some faithful people amongst those ten. Just think, if they had gone to war, some of those faithful people would have been killed. And rather than them being killed and the soldiers being killed, we have many that are migrating now from those ten tribes of Israel down to Judah and Benjamin to live. They just left everything, and they just went down there to serve the Levites, and uh, the priest, because Rehoboam did not want to have anything to do with anybody that was being faithful to the true God of Israel. We see this very same thing took place, did it not, in the Protestant Reformation. How that there were many, and perhaps many of us here have relatives who, who were or ancestors who were in Europe during the time of the persecutions at the time of the Protestant Reformation and have come to this country 
uh, so that they could worship the Lord according to the word of God. This is the very same thing that happened because God was working upon those good people that are faithful in the north, leaving their homeland. They would rather worship the true God and give up all that they had in the north so that they could worship the Lord. And so priests and Levites and such as feared God were cast off by Jeroboam, who turned into an idolater and an apostate against the true faith. God's faithful people then migrating to Benjamin and Judah were strengthened. Here we see Rehoboam was able to strengthen his kingdom instead of using all his resources and energy to destroy the ten tribes to the north. And also we see that as many migrated from the north, they too helped build up the church and to minister and serve the church at Jerusalem. Note in verse 3, 13, it says, And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted unto Rehoboam out of all their coasts. And so, again, Haas says the enjoyment of the free exercise of our religion cannot be too dearly purchased. Better it, it is to beg our bread from door to door with a good conscience. Talking about those people that left uh, the north, northern uh, Israel, and came down to Judah uh, to worship the one true God, to have a good conscience. It's better to leave all your fortunes, all the resources, and go to where you can worship God freely. Then put up with the apostasy that uh, they had to deal with uh, in the kingdom of Jeroboam. They who for the sake of God forsake all shall one day find themselves no losers. They should be received with open arms and treated with every kindness who, suffering for conscience sake, seek among us a refuge from persecution. And so we note in verse 14, the Levites then, it says, left their suburbs. The Levites, they were faithful men. They wanted to serve the Lord according to the word of God that they were taught. And they wanted to come down and worship the Lord in truth, according to the scriptures. They left their suburbs and their possessions, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from ex executing the priest's office unto the Lord. And he ordained him priest. For the high places. Now notice in verse 15. It's talking about Jeroboam. He despised those who were faithful to the true God. The Levites and others. And he wanted only those who would worship uh, his idols. And he or ordained priest for the high places. And he ordained priest. Notice it says in verse 15. For the devils. There was demon worship involved in Jeroboam's kingdom, the 12 tribes to the north. And for the calves, you know, they had calf worship all the time. During It started with Jeroboam, and it lasted until the Babylonian captivity. So Rehoboam, as king in Judah, was greatly enriched uh, spiritually. Now think about it. Here we have all these faithful uh, Levites coming now to Jerusalem to serve according to the word of God. It would be like uh, having uh, people that, whose eyes were open, they understood the Reformed faith, and, and they left these congregations in this community that have 2,000 or so members, realizing that what they're doing is, was totally unbiblical. Their eyes are open, and so they come in, and they just flood uh, in the church building. <laughs> That would be a, a, a blessing to see that, to have people's eyes opened and to turn away uh, from the false worship of our time. 
And so it says, in all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord, God of Israel, came to Jerusalem. Now this is the kind of uh, people that would, you would certainly pray that God would be pleased to send. Those people coming then into Judah and into Jerusalem to worship God were those whose hearts were set on seeking the God of Israel and to sacrifice to the Lord God of their fathers. All sacrifices to God from the children of Israel in the north was to be done in Jerusalem. The Passover was to be celebrated by all 12 tribes. Now that they had split, many faithful believers trapped in those 10 tribes were able to leave and were able to come then down and to worship uh, in Jerusalem as God had told them to do. And many more remained there in the northern kingdom, worshiping the calves and the devils. And so Israel, the northern kingdom, lost their faithful priest. And many who worshiped the true God. While Judah gained exceedingly by their coming and joining uh, with Rehoboam in Judah. Judah not only gained in number, but they gained in, in great spiritual strength by those uh, who were zealous for the true faith and also the many Levites that came uh, to assist in the worship there. And we note then in verse 17 it says, and this is really the last verse in the bottom line of the message, and that is this. As we obey the Lord, we will find strength. And so the migration of the faithful Levitical priest and many who worshipped the true God, they strengthened then the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong. Just suppose, go back a moment and think now, just suppose Rehoboam would not have listened to the prophet and would have gone into battle. He would have been greatly weakened. But here, in obeying the prophet's words, God had a better plan. And he listened to it. And God made him strong. And what we want to note is this. There is strength in obedience. We need to ask ourselves when we come upon any matter in our life, what is the will of God? Just think about it. When you take a step in one direction in a decision that you make, it's not going to stop with that one step. It's going to be another and another. So if you make a wrong step in the wrong direction, you're going to go further and further and further away. Just think of those dear people that were faithful uh, to, to God who left the northern kingdom. If they had to stay there the rest of their life, what they had had to put up with, the worshiping of devils would be their neighbors, the worshipers of devils, worshipers of calves. Would we want our children playing with them? Would we want us to be intermingling as a society with that type of people? And so as they were able to leave, they came down, and it says Rehoboam because he made the right decision. He obeyed the word of the prophet. It actually made him stronger. Now notice it says for three years that he walked in the way of David and of Solomon. As we move on into 
the book of Second Chronicles, we find then that uh, later Rehoboam uh, started sliding away from the true God. And, but at this point, it is a good lesson to us to follow, always do what is right. Follow the word of the Lord. So not only in dividing the kingdom of God did God judge the sin of Sodom or Solomon, excuse me, but his plan was to strengthen his true people, the true people of God, by separating them from the vile in Israel. In stopping Rehoboam's attempt to reunite Israel into twelve tribes. God's purpose was to have a people in Judah purged from idolatry. And many faithful saints came there to worship. As long as Judah feared God and obeyed his word, they were strengthened and they prospered. I know there is a... <clears throat> saying that we've been hearing recently, and that is there's peace uh, through strength. But I would have us to understand even a better principle. There's strength through obedience. Moses, as he talked to Joshua, who went in to conquer the land, he said... Be strong and very courageous. Now, this is a good word for us to apply this message to this evening. And that is, we are living in times of slipping away from orthodoxy and from the truth. And so it is upon us to be strong and courageous, as said to Joshua. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. This is what we are called to do. To be faithful to the word of God. Which Moses, my servant, God says to Joshua, commanded thee. Turn not from it. Do not turn from the word of the Lord. Better that we die in obedience than to compromise and apostatize. Turn not from the word of the Lord, to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thy, thou goest. Do we want to prosper? Now, when I'm talking about prosperity, I'm not talking about economic prosperity. What good is, what good is economic prosperity if there's uh, spiritual poverty or if there if, if our country is bankrupt spiritually, we really need to pray that God would send a visitation of his spirit to awaken uh, Christians uh, uh, to their responsibility of going out and witnessing of the gospel as well as our living the gospel in such a way that others would want to come and know the gospel and we could minister to them. And so the same message comes to us this evening that was given to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 as he went in to conquer Canaan. Regarding the word of the Lord and obedience to the word of the Lord, this book of the law, God says, shall not depart out of thy mouth. We're to speak it. We are to proclaim it. Yes, we have our devotions. We hear good sermons and Yet we are to proclaim it. Are we Christians too silent these days? Are we not standing up for what thus saith the Lord is? I'm sure that prophet Shemaiah doesn't say that much about who he was or his feelings about. He was an obedient man and he really turned the tide for Rehoboam. He really saved the day for uh, Rehoboam, by taking that word of the Lord, and he did so in the face of a powerful king who had 180,000 soldiers ready to go to war. And nevertheless, he stood strong. 
And he made the king, or he called upon the king to honor the word that God had given him. And he did. And Rehoboam prospered. So then the application is that we, too, need to be faithful to the word of the Lord. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now, as I say, we read the scriptures, perhaps in family devotions or personal devotions, but do we speak that word to others? It says, you shall meditate in the word of God day and night. Psalm 1 is very excellent in exhorting us in uh, the righteous man and how that he meditates upon the Lord day and night. You, meditate uh, is something something that uh, we perhaps are so busy that we don't find those quiet times where we should. What I, I think about meditation, it's, it's when you have something that grabs your mind and it rolls over and over in your mind. And until you really feel that you have gotten a grasp of what God's word is, is, is saying. We are to meditate upon that word day and night. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every morning we could wake up uh, uh, quoting some of the scriptures that we had meditated on the day before. We need to individually give ourselves more and more to hearing what God has to say. For therein is our strength. Meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do. Now, why do we learn the word of God? Why do we, would we meditate upon it? So that we may observe to do according to all that is written therein. And the promise is, if we read that word of God and we study and meditate upon the word, then the promise was given to Joshua promise that still still stands for God's people. In meditating upon that word of God, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And I would like to emphasize prosperous should be understood in a spiritual way. We need to prosper spiritually. And then thou shalt have good success. And God says, to Joshua, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Yes, we need great courage. We need to be strong and stand up for the word and let that word come out of our mouth that we tell others about it. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee where, whithersoever thou goest. Now, God is with us whithersoever we go. We have the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did he not say uh, that we are to take the gospel into the uttermost parts of the world? And he said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So we have him with us, and uh, his spirit abides in us. And uh, may God give us grace to study his word and meditate upon it and declare that word and share that word with others. So what Joshua needed to do, what he needed to learn, and uh, what we see Rehoboam did is that he observed to do according to what the prophet had spoken. And as we observe to do whatsoever the word of the Lord says, whether it be individuals or whether it be the congregation, we will see blessing. And it is my prayer that here at Grace Orthodox Presbyterian Church, that in this coming year, you will find strength in the conquest that God will give to you as you observe to do according to all that is written in his word. For therein lies your strength. That is, in obeying God's word. Let us never think, as Rehoboam, that we must unite with those who are in apostasy 
or heterodox societies that go under a church name. But we must remain steadfast uh, to God's word. We must come out from amongst those that are, have turned away from God and rather strive for greater purity of life and faithfulness in doctrine. Only then will we be strong. Amen.